Here I'm going to explain the information on pages 234 to 236 of your book about how neurons conduct electric signals. Neurons run on voltage. So it's electricity and we measure it in millivolts. And you always have two areas. If you look at the pictures in the book, it talks about the inside of the neuron and the outside of the neuron. So if we draw an axon, okay, so the axon, just to kind of give you a context, here's my very simplistic neuron drawing. This is the axon. The axon is the long part of the neuron. In some people, it can be up to seven feet long because there's an axon, the longest axon in your body goes from your lower back all the way out to your toe. That's one long axon all that distance. So the axon has ions, and remember you've already learned about ions, and ion is a charged particle. You have positive ions, should also be called cations. Inside, you also have cations outside. You're always comparing how many there are inside to how many there are outside. Let's suppose that there are 10 outside and 5 inside. If this were the case, we would say that that neuron has a voltage of negative 5 because the inside has 5 less than the outside. If it were 10 in both places, we would say that the neuron has a voltage of 0 because there is 0 difference between the inside and the outside. If it were 5 outside and 20 inside, we would say that the neuron is positive 15 because the inside has 15 more cations than the outside. So you're always comparing the inside to the outside to get the voltage of a neuron. So an axon at rest, so we have resting membrane potential. So this is our axon at rest. So it's not currently sending a signal. It has lots of sodium outside. It has lots of potassium inside. When you add up how many sodiums, how many potassiums, plus some other ions that are involved, but we're just going to focus on the sodium and potassium, you end up with negative 75 millivolts for your resting membrane potential. So that means a neuron at rest has 75 fewer cations on the inside than it does on the outside. And the distribution, remember, is it keeps the sodium out and the potassium in. Now we want to send a signal. A signal is called an action potential. So this would be like, say, you want to wiggle your toes. So you have to have an action potential go through that axon from your lower back out to your toes. Or you want to move your fingers like you're writing with your pencil. You have an axon that goes from your spine, kind of near your shoulder, neck area there, out to your fingers to stimulate those muscles. So we're going to have an action potential. It occurs in two steps. Step one is depolarization. This is where we're going to reverse the voltage. Right now, the inside is negative. We're going to make the inside positive. So in depolarization, you have sodium gates. You remember learning about gates back when you first learned about cells? There's transport proteins in a cell membrane. A neuron is a cell, so an axon is part of a cell. It has a cell membrane. The sodium gates open and they let the sodium come in. And the sodium diffuses. Remember diffusion, you move from high concentration to low concentration. 
If there's lots of sodium outside, it wants to diffuse in. All you have to do is open the gates. It's kind of like the Black Friday shoppers. You know how like they all stand outside the store waiting for the sales to start? All you have to do is open the doors and they go rushing in. So depolarization is when sodium comes in. Now you have lots of positive ions on the inside. So now the inside has 30 more than the outside. So you raise your voltage to positive 30. The next step of an action potential is repolarization. Now you have to get back to negative 75. Well, the way you do this is you let potassium out. So you open potassium gates and potassium goes out. And that reduces your voltage back down to negative 75. If we look at our neuron now, after the action potential, now your sodium is inside and your potassium is outside. We flipped them. We started off with the sodium outside and the potassium in. Now you have to reset back to resting. And that is where your sodium potassium pump comes in. And there's a picture of this in your book. The sodium potassium pump pumps the sodium back out. It pumps the potassium back in. And now you are reset and ready for your next signal. Okay, so that's how you get the signal through the axon. So if we come back up here to our picture, everything we've talked about so far was the axon. When you get down here to the end, so the signal's moving this way, you have either another neuron or you have an effector, a muscle or a gland, that you have to give that signal to. Remember the nervous system is all about communication. So it doesn't do you any good to have a signal if you don't share that signal, if you don't give that signal to something else. So now when it's time to communicate with something else, either our other neuron or our muscle or our gland, we're going to have an area here called the synapse. Notice they don't actually touch each other. They're just close to each other. Think about when you talk to somebody. You don't have to put your mouth right on their ear in order to talk to them. You just have to be close to each other in order to hear the other person talking. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to look at the synapse and how you get that signal from one to the other. So when you get down to the end of the axon, you have what's called a synaptic knob. It can also be called a synaptic bulb. It goes by a few names. So here is your axon. At the end of it is the bulb or the knob. This contains vesicles. And think back to when you learned about cells, you learned about vesicles. And these vesicles are full of neurotransmitter. So we can put some little dots in here to represent neurotransmitter. And then here is, you say this could be a muscle or a gland or another neuron. It's whatever we're going to give the signal to. The neurotransmitter is what's going to give the signal to that next cell. So you have to get the neurotransmitter out. This area on the neuron is called the presynaptic membrane. And this area on the next cell, whether it's a muscle, a gland, or another neuron, 
is the postsynaptic membrane. So pre just means before and post means after. Because remember, this space in between them is the synapse. So you have before the synapse, you have after the synapse. The presynaptic membrane and the vesicles both have a negative charge. Okay, so think about what you learned about ions. Opposites attract, likes repel. If you have two things that both have a negative charge, they are going to repel from each other. So as long as we have this state where the vesicles in the membrane are both negative, the neurotransmitter is going to stay put. And this is why you're not just going around secreting neurotransmitter all the time. It's a controlled process, right? You only contract your muscles when you want to. So now that we want to send that signal across, we're gonna to have to get these vesicles to go up to the presynaptic membrane and release the neurotransmitter. Well, if likes repel, remember, opposites attract. So we need to get those vesicles to be positive. You do that with calcium. Calcium is a cation, it has a positive two charge. So when that action potential, so we have an action potential here in the axon. When the action potential gets to the end of the axon, it makes calcium gates here in the knob open. And calcium comes in. And that calcium coats these vesicles and makes them positive. So when the action potential gets to the end of the axon. It makes calcium gates in the knob open. Calcium comes in and it coats the vesicles. This makes the vesicles positive. Now the vesicles will attract to the presynaptic membrane and they will release their neurotransmitter. So then the neurotransmitter is released out here into the cleft and over on the postsynaptic membrane you have receptors that that neurotransmitter binds to, and it gives the message to the next cell. So there is a basic overview of how neurons are sending signals, how you have that signal go through the axon and how you release neurotransmitter to get the signal to the next cell.